If you're in the market for a wireless backup camera system, you might have noticed that wireless doesn't mean entirely wireless. A lot of these cameras require that you tap into the vehicle's power, basically tap into the power wires of your car. Now that may not be too hard, but for some people who want to avoid the hassle of installing anything that complex into their car, you might want to look at a completely true wireless camera solution. So on this video, I'm going to be showing you the new Autobox TW1 completely wireless camera solution. Now, when I first heard about this device, I was kind of curious of how they were going to do that. And I'm pretty excited to show it to you guys. I'm going to show you what you get inside of this box. Then I'm going to take it out and then we'll take it out to the car and see how well it performs. I'll also walk you through the features of it and we'll see some both day and nighttime footage. And as always, I have placed a link in the description down below if you want to look at this system further. Hi guys, I am Alex the Car Guy, and on this channel, I review cool car gadgets and other accessories that I found for your car. So if that is the kind of stuff you like and you want to trick out your car, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. And we'll start with the display. You get a fairly compact unit, but they still manage to pack a 5-inch LCD screen. And it has a nice little stubby antenna, so it's not going to get in the way of anything. And for mounting, I do like that they include this suction mount. And this is one of my favorite ways of mounting in it because it just, you put it on your windshield and you are done. If you don't like it, take it off that place, put it in another different place. So super easy way to mount it. And the display is really the only thing that's going to need power and that is done via cigarette lighter adapter plug. Now the cigarette lighter plug has a secondary USB port on here so we can still charge our phone. But here's the start of the show and that is the actual backup camera system itself. And this is a very interesting profile or shape. I have not seen this before. They designed this so this can be mounted on your existing license plate bracket, whether you want to see the front of your car to avoid hitting the curve on your parking, or you can put it in the rear license plate to help you back into a tight spot. The camera on this side is capable of 720 video and can be aimed up or down so we can get a good view of what we're trying to see. Now there's two ways of putting this into the license plate of the car. One of them being removing the screws from the existing license plate, sticking this on and putting the screws back on. The second way, which is pretty cool, is this. And this is high adhesion tape that's gonna be placed on the back. I'm gonna peel the back and then stick that to whatever I want, whatever part of the car that I wanna be able to monitor. But how long does the battery in here last before I have to recharge it? Well, Autobox says that the battery will provide enough power for the camera to last about two to three months in between recharging. Now, obviously that's gonna vary depending on how often you're using the camera, but two to three months, that's pretty good. That means that at the most, you're probably gonna be charging this three, maybe four times a year. Now to recharge it, there is a little cap in the back where I pull off, connect the USB cable to it, charge it until the light is green, and then I can simply reinstall the cap. But this is my favorite part, when they come up with clever add-ons to improve a product. And <laughs> look at this! This is the same camera, but now I have mounted the optional solar panel. Now with this solar panel, the battery life can be extended anywhere from three to nine months. Imagine three to nine months. Now, so this won't fully charge it. Eventually you'll still have to take it to plug, but charging your camera once a year, that is pretty cool. Now, obviously that's gonna depend on how much light your car gets during the day, because that's what's gonna recharge the camera. Now, installing the sonal panel is done fairly easy because it's held on with a clip. So you can simply slide it, lock it in place and connect it to the back. Now, Autobox says that the solar panel doesn't necessarily have to be mounted here. It could be mounted somewhere else. So if you wanted to mount it with a different, instead of using the clip, you could use this little double-sided tape that they included and you can place the tape in the back and then place this sort of solar panel somewhere else. There is a little bit of extra length in the cable back here to be able to mount that in a different location. And for those looking for the ultimate visibility when backing up or moving forward in a car, this system does support dual cameras. So you could buy a second camera and you can potentially mount one in the back 
and you can mount one in the front or anywhere else you like. So let's go out to the car and test the system out and see how well it performs. And this is what the TW1 Truly Wireless System looks like installed. I like the, the fact that it's black, so it kind of blends in with the car. You can't really tell, but I would recommend getting security screws just to make sure that nobody help them, helps themselves <laughs> to a free wireless backup system. And here's what the rear setup looks like. It blends in a lot better, partially because of the way that this bumper is. So the camera is kind of tucked in inside. Even the solar panel, it doesn't really stick out. It looks somewhat stale on there and again I secured it using those locking screws if you guys want to get a set of those screws I'll put a link in the description down below they particularly help for people not to take your stickers or in this case for people not to take your camera system and this is the Autobox TW1 wireless system I'm gonna turn on the car so we can see how fast it takes to turn on here we go and there it is fairly quick now remember this system is entirely wireless. I have placed two cameras, one in the front and one in the rear, which is the one that we are seeing right now. If I do wanna change the view, I can push down the button right here and that's gonna flip the image now to the front camera. Now notice that the front camera, I have it pointed down. And the reason why I have it pointed down is so I can see before I hit a curb. Now this is very different how I have the rear camera set up the rear camera set up, I have it set up so it's somewhat pointing down but a little bit higher so I can see for backing up. Also, we can see that we have reversing guidelines. Reversing guidelines are extremely helpful for a wireless setup and I'll show you how they work. I have set them up so we know we have enough distance from the sidewalk as long as they stay in the green and maybe even the yellow. So here we go. <laughs> now there is a certain time before the screen times out and turns off and that is to save battery. Uh, right now I have it set, uh, so it lasts a little longer, but you can set it for shorter intervals if you wanted to increase the battery life of the cameras. So that was going backwards. Let's change to the front imaging. Okay, front image and we'll move forwards. So it's actually very responsive and very fluid to be wirelessly. And what's interesting too is that the image quality is 720. Let's imagine right here. Let's imagine that this is a curve right here and I wanted to avoid hitting that curve. So I'm gonna stop somewhere in the green and I measured this, I was on the outside of the car. This will be probably a little bit hairy close. And <laughs> now it's on the yellow, but this is how the front camera can be used with the reversing lights. And another feature that I really like is how you can adjust the guidelines. Some cameras offer reversing guidelines, but they don't let you adjust them. This system does let you adjust them and you have a couple of choices, a total of six choices to be exact. And I found that mine works better right here. So everything lines up correctly. And I went outside and I know green is good, yellow is a little too close, and then red, I will be hitting the curve. So having the ability to adjust those guidelines, it is really, really helpful. And we can also adjust the brightness of the display and we can adjust the contrast of it. Now being able to adjust the brightness is good if you feel that the display is a little too dark, but it's also important if you wanna use the system at night and you don't want this screen to basically clear some glare for you or distract you, you can lower the brightness. And another interesting feature is the control of how the camera is displayed. You can choose to display it in mirror or you can choose to display it upside down. Now, why would you wanna flip the image upside down? Or why would you wanna flip the image this way? Well, if you place the rear camera in the front, then you will wanna flip the image so everything is on the correct side. If you place the camera upside down, lower, then you could also flip the image so you can see correctly. So I like that it gives you the flexibility of placing the camera however you want in whichever location and then adjust the image in the display to see how it's actually shown. You can also adjust how long it takes before the screen times out. I have it set right now at 90 seconds, but you can have it as short as 45 seconds. And if for some reason you don't want the reversing guidelines, you can choose to turn off the reversing guidelines you could potentially select having guidelines on for the rear and no guidelines on for the front or no guidelines at all. So it's neat that each camera can have its own different set of settings. 
And here's another great example of how you can use the front camera. Not only can prevent you from hitting the curve if your car happens to be a little bit low, it can also help you if you're parking close to an object such as a car in front of you and you wanna be able to judge that distance. Here, I'm parking against my garage door and I like to get fairly close to my door but leave enough space so I can still walk in front of the car. So what I done, I have adjusted the guidelines so I know when the garage door is in the green zone, I still have enough space to walk in front of my car and I know I'm not gonna hit my garage door. But what happened once the screen times out? How can I bring it up? Do I have to go through the whole startup sequence? Not really. Remember, there is a button on the cigarette lighter plug that if I press that button, it automatically brings the camera back up and it's pretty instantaneous. So that makes it fairly convenient. And as a small side note, I placed the display in the center of my dash just so I can film it. But technically this can be placed somewhere down lower in the dash so it's not in your way when driving or off to the side so you have good visibility of the road when you are not using this system. And this is what the Autobox TW1 system looks like at night. Now there is no infrared lighting on the system. What they done is they have placed a very sensitive camera sensor in the back so we can see a lot of clarity without having to need extra light. Now there is my backup lights lighting up the road, so we got a pretty clear picture, and we can very easily back up, and I can see here the green lines is what is allowing me to follow the sidewalk, and I'm coming here to a stop right about here. Here's what the front camera looks like. Remember, I have aimed the camera down so I can see towards the front, and there is a little bit of a shadow from the car and that is because the lights on cars are designed to light the road. They're not designed to light the bottom. I think if I had fog lights on this car, I think I would have even more visibility here. But if this line was a concrete stop, I would still be able to know, okay, I have stopped and any closer to this, I will hit my front bumper. So it works pretty good. And here again is a scenario where if I wanted to park close enough to my garage door but still leave enough of space for me to walk, I can still do this at night. Obviously my house does have additional lights so it looks even crispier. So yeah, it could definitely be used both at day and at night. And that was the Autobox TW1 Truly Wireless System. And this system is probably the easiest system that I have seen in terms of setup. Well, there's absolutely nothing to connect to your car. I literally just removed two screws, put the camera on, put the screws back in, and I am done. And I also like how fast the display connects to both cameras. I'm able to switch fairly quickly to both of them. I don't have to worry about going outside and pushing a button to turn them on. It is all done and controlled automatically by the system. And I think the quality of the video is more than sufficient. Technically, it's considered HD, it's 720. I know a lot of people want 1080 full HD, but that's a whole other setup that you need to run wires and it gets more complicated and there is more cost. So I think this is a great system for somebody who doesn't want to go through the hassle of a complicated installation but, but still wants good high quality video. So if you guys have any more questions regarding the TW1 wireless backup system, please put that in the comments down below. Remember, I placed a link in the description also if you want to look at this system further. And if you found any part of this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool gadgets coming up including dash cam reviews and other cool gadgets that I find for your car. So thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.